this movie we'll go through the steps necessary to make the stratified geologic model. It'll work through the, ge the geology module in the strata calc menu pull down and in the grids pull down. Starting point is a drawing with contours and drill holes. See I have a contour map and these are individual drill holes if I double click on one. It's a simple example with just uh, four intervals in this drill hole, two coal seams in this case. You need a starting grid file so I'm going to go under grids and make 3D grid from the surface topography. We'll call it surface topography. We'll use triangulation, auto detect the points. I'll do a screen pick for position and I'll choose dimensions of a cell. We'll go 50 by 50. In fact, we'll shrink that down to 25 by 25. Hit OK. Pick the lower left and upper right grid corners. And then select all the surface 3D entities to define the surface. OK, it wrote the grid called surface topo. And so right away we're going to go in and view that grid in 3D with the Surface 3D Viewer. Grab the one called Surface Topo. And there it is, nicely colored by elevation. And you can see I can tip it up. Look at it, I'm going to spin it on the side. Maybe bump up the vertical scale a little bit, four times. And there's a nice 3D shell of the pit. So this will be our starting topo, and we'll make then the subsurface geology grids to match this one. If I turn off the rendering, there you can see the individual, individual grid cells. Click on for rendering. Exit there. Next step is to run the auto run strata grids. We'll skip over the make strata grids, which is individually one by one. We'll define an auto run macro file. Don't have any fault lines. Go ahead and select the drill holes. No inclusion, no exclusion is necessary. And now we'll go ahead and add, choose strata process. And I'll just use my control button and highlight both of the individual coal seams. And let's start by modeling the bottom elevation. Choose the grid position. We'll set that once only for the surface topo and then all the other grids will match that. Here's the default name, it's the C1 key elevation grid. For elevation grids, I'm going to go with linear least squares, weighting power 2. Okay, there's two bottom elevations. Go ahead and add the two top elevations. Same process. Go with top elevation. Set grid position is good. There's the EL2 is the name, and linear least squares is the method. Two down, we'll go and add the same two coal seams, and let's grab Let's grab BTU this time. Let's go with inverse distance modeling method. And we'll add one more, which will be the thickness. Go back up to the top and go thickness in feet or meters. Thickness, I'll also go inverse distance. So there's a quick macro to build. You could throw other qualities on the list, but for speed, we'll just hit save and hit the make grids button. So now as it's processing through three of eight grids, you can see down below, it is making and writing out those grid files. Processing is now complete. Hit OK and exit out. Check out the grid inspector now, just to verify the grid values. I'll go under grids, grid inspector, clear this, and let's just hit the set button and grab a few of the grids that we just made. Let's grab the surface topo first, and then maybe the C1 bottom elevation, the C2 bottom elevation. And let's look at the C1 thickness and the C2 thickness. Hit OK. Here's the inspector window. So as you move the crosshairs and cursor around the map, you're seeing real-time live values as it's drilling down through the grid files. If you zoom in and pick a spot to label, it labels your grid files for you nicely at that point. Okay, the grids look good, they're in order. Lastly, we combine them into one geologic model called a pre-calculated grids file. So I go to StratoCalc, define pre-calculated grids. We'll make a new one and in the right folder. 
and we'll call it the elevation model. Make it an elevation pre-calc file. You can also do a thickness geologic model. We'll use elevation. The surface topography gets its own spot up here at the top. And then we need to add in all the individual seams down below. And there's a shortcut here. It's called load auto run. That'll load up that macro we just built and it'll populate the list with at least the bottom elevations. I usually put the quality attributes down below. And so now I need to bring in the top elevations. We'll just bring those in one at a time with an add. We'll just call this the C1OB. It's a non-key, so it's waste interval. It's bottom elevation of overburden is the C1 top elevation grid. Move up. So I've got overburden, C1 coal. Add one more, the C2 IB for interburden. It's also non-key waste. Select the file as a C2 EL2 top. Hit OK. There it is. Go ahead and save it. That's your elevation model. And let's do a quick fence through the grids and drill, around, drill down through those to see what it looks like. I'll go to draw just a polyline across this pit. And we'll go to Stratocalc. Just do a quick fence so it's going to do an instantaneous cross section through the grids. Grab the elevation model pre. Do P for polyline. Grab the line. And there we have it. As you move left and right on the fence, you see the triangle in plan view of where you are. And then you have the adjust alignment. If you want to just grab the middle of the line, you can move the polyline anywhere in the map and see a live real-time cross-section through the grids. Notice in the open pit they don't trim, so you get to see if grids are indeed crossing to check for problems, and they do show up nicely here. There's options for saving, drawing, or printing out this cross-section down below as well. We'll just take exit. And this concludes the quick movie for building the stratigraphic pre-calculated grid model. Thank you.